Yes, I am a writer. I'm kind of a technical writer, so some of what I write uh, is, is technical uh, research reports, which are published in, in scientific journals. I've written uh, articles about paleontology uh, directed at people who aren't paleontologists, who I'm, I'm trying to explain, you know, this is what I do and this is what paleontologists do. I'm always, when, I, when I write stuff like that, I'm always imagining I'm writing for my mother. <laughs> Sciences are often ignored in terms of the importance of writing. And I find that the better communicators, the better writers, create papers that are more widely read and they are more appreciated by the community. Communication and clear understanding of concepts. I try and have writing play a big role in all of my classes because uh, I personally feel with good evidence that writing is simply the most important skill that you can uh, come out of college with because no matter what you end up doing professionally, uh, you will have to write and you will have to write well to be successful. And uh, certainly in the sciences, that's very important. Communication is the most important thing that goes on in the sciences. It's a big component. So from for, for example, in this semester I'm teaching a scientific process skills course. It's a freshman course that they take to, one, understand what the scientific literature is and how to read the scientific literature and understand what um, or how data is presented. And we also go through some data analysis, but a large chunk of it is about writing. And then in other courses I teach um, upper level biology courses and there I usually have one big uh, writing assignment for lab and then one big writing assignment for lecture. And uh, I usually have them submit a draft, then I revise it, and then they submit a final version. One of the problem that scientists have is that we're, as a group, we're not very good at explaining to other people what it is we do. Um, we're good at talking to each other, but we're not so good at talking to the rest of the world. And I've always tried to um, develop some writing assignments for my students that, that put them in the role of having to communicate um, complex ideas to people who don't necessarily have a lot of background in, in those ideas. For our lab reports, the whole department follows a specific format that, that we want students to go through abstracts, introductions, materials and methods, results, and then their discussion. So that's, uh, that's a very specific format that they follow. In my upper level courses, um, I tend to follow the format that the journals actually provide, so I try, that's part of the learning experience. The format varies from assignment to assignment, so um, some of my writing assignments I'm asking students to mimic different types of professional writing. Other assignments I'm asking my students to put themselves in the mode of trying to explain technical material to a non-technical audience. One of the biggest issues is a lot of students put off the writing till the last minute. So I encourage them that they can hand me drafts whenever they want, um, but I also encourage them to you know, read each other's writing, give comments back. I try in every class to have one writing assignment where uh, the students hand in a rough draft, I review the rough draft, I provide feedback, uh, advice, um, I point out where there are um, mechanical mistakes, but I also try and, and give them feedback on how they've organized the paper. The more, the more revision cycles uh, a piece of writing goes through, the better it gets. I give them feedback on where they have made basic errors of spelling and grammar and punctuation, and uh, sometimes I will actually make the correction on the paper, and sometimes I'll simply circle it and, and say, figure out what's wrong with this. Uh, I give them feedback on how well they've, they've generated a thesis paragraph. I give them feedback on where they've um, been awkward in, in trying to express an idea. I let them know if I don't understand what they're talking about in a particular part of the paper. I give them feedback on whether they've um, successfully created a, a bibliography. What I'm mostly hoping for is that they will sit down and rewrite their paper. Most people at the undergraduate stage of their careers haven't yet figured out that nothing anybody writes is worth very much the first time around. No matter what you end up doing professionally, you will need to write. You will need to write, uh, you might need to write creatively, you might need to write technically. 
Writing is important in my field mostly for communication. That's the biggest part of it. We have to be able to communicate clearly what we're talking about. Sometimes it can be very esoteric or very dense, and so the better that you can communicate it, the better off you are as a, a member of the community. In all fields, you, know, you have to be able to communicate what you're doing. And so the major way in, in science is to publish papers. Because you can do all this wonderful research, but at, then at the end of the day, if you don't actually get it out for review and, and have it accepted, nobody's going to really see They have to be able to explain, you know, what's the importance of this, because a lot of what we do, you know, the general audience may not have an appreciation for why are we doing it. You will be writing some kind of report. You will be communicating um, with, the, with the written word. You will be writing emails. To somebody and the better you communicate the more correct the more properly formatted in terms of style and grammar and punctuation your communication is the more successful you will be you will be judged by your writing if you cannot write well you will struggle to be successful and the science is it's important to write to be a technical writer to be an effective technical writer an effective technical communication a communicator but it's also important to be able to express complicated technical ideas to non-technical people. In a professional setting, when you, when you produce a report for an environmental consulting firm, the people reading that report are not hydrologists. They're um, lawyers, they're developers, they're clients. And they, they're not going to understand the technicalities of, of groundwater hydrology. You have to be able to communicate it to them in a language that they will understand. You can have a very good piece of research, but if you communicate it poorly, it doesn't go anywhere in the scientific community. Again, it's, it's quite simply the most important thing you can learn to do well in college. It's, it's the one thing that matters the most.